Welcome back to Jewel Mine. For those of you who are new, my name is Tom. I designed my first RV solar system back in 2018. I lived and traveled off of RV solar for a little over three years. I learned it so that I could afford to travel and that ultimately has turned into a business. Since 2018, I've become an ABYC marine technician. I've opened an RV solar business, and that's basically all we do is RV solar or solar for mobile applications. I've worked on pretty much every major brand out there and just about every RV type as well. And so I'm bringing that up just so you can understand, you know, kind of what my education level is, what my experience level is. And you can, you know, know that I've done over 100 systems and consulted on probably 150 or 200 by this point. For those of you who know me, you know that I'm not gonna try to sell you something that you really don't need. I'm gonna give you information and let you make a decision. And so that brings me to today's video. Do you need a digital multi-control if you're going with a Servo GX and touchscreen device? Do you need to spend the extra money on this? Do you really? Let's jump right into it right now. Before I answer the question if you need this or not, let me just kind of tell you what these items are. This is a digital multi-control. Essentially, this is a remote for your inverter. It allows you to turn your inverter on and off. Basically, it's the same switch that's on the inverter itself. Plus, it allows you to adjust your current, current limit with this little dial here. And this is like the cheaper way to control your inverter if you don't have this. So this right here is the Servo GX, and this is a Touch 50 screen, which attaches to the Servo GX. This is basically this item over here on steroids because it also networks to all of the rest of the system. Everything that this does, this also does. So the question is, do you need the digital multi-control if you have a Servo GX and a Touch 50 or a Touch 70? Absolutely not. There's no reason to spend the money on this extra part or the extra labor to have it installed if you're not gonna do it yourself. I know there's some you know, misinformation out there that you can't control the inverter from this, which is just people not being knowledgeable with the system, in my opinion. And I know there's a big famous YouTuber out there who wanted to see this nice light when they come in because if they lost shore power, then they wouldn't really know. But there's literally an easy setting in here to get notified if that does happen. Let's jump right in to show you why this is way better than this. The first thing I want to point out is how you can see everything with your solar system, not just what the inverter is doing on the screen. Starting in the bottom left, we can see our battery down here. Now, normally you would see what percentage the battery is at, but this one hasn't been synced yet, but we can still see our battery voltage and our amps going out. Normally you would see, you know, 20% or 100% or however full the battery is right there as well. On the bottom right hand side, we would see PV. So this is our solar coming in. Again, this solar is currently turned off, but you would see how much solar your, you know, system is producing, which is pretty cool. Now on the top of the screen, you would see what the inverter is doing. On the left, you would see how many watts are coming in from shore power. We can see right now we don't have any shore power coming in, which is why there's no watts. And then in the middle, we can see that the inverter is in inverting mode. If it was you know, in pass through or charging, it would say that. And then on the right hand side, we can see how many watts we're using on our AC loads. So we can see we have about a 90 watt load running right now. This is all information that would not be shown on the digital multi-control, like if you just went with the digital multi-control. Now, I know that this is the main screen that when you buy the servo that it comes with, and then there's this screen as well, which gives you the same information just displayed in a different manner. And that is all. And I think that's where the confusion comes in because people don't know how to turn on the way to control the inverter. Now, you can go into your menu and then you can go directly into your Victron, you know, inverter, which right here is displayed at the top. This is a multi plus two in this coach. And you can do everything with your inverter right here. So you can turn your shore power limit. You can turn your inverter on and off. You can do everything with your inverter. But if you want there to be an actual screen for that, simply go into settings. Then go into display in language right here. And then this is what we want to turn on show boat and motorhome overview. We want to turn this on. And now if we go back out to the main pages, there's a new page. We now have this one. So as you can see at the bottom middle AC mode, this is what mode the inverter is on. And then this is our current limit. So you could easily adjust your current limit right here or turn your inverter on and off. Now, of course, we're not going to be able to do that because we also have the digital multi-control plugged in. You can see it gave us a little warning telling us that you're not able to control the system because there is a digital multi-control. And this is really the problem with adding a digital multi-control is it takes away features because now you can't control your inverter remotely. You see the Servo GX allows you to remote log into it via the VRM. So basically via the internet, 
you can turn your inverter on and off. So basically now I can control it in person right up front, just like the digital watching control, or I can control it via the internet. But because this system does have the digital multi control, I can no longer control it from the internet. It kind of renders this whole screen useless because you can't do anything with the inverter anyways. So you don't really need to turn on the motorhome view anymore. But in my opinion, going to here and turning on one setting is much better than spending the money on a digital multi control. I mean, it already comes with a system. So why pay extra to do the exact same thing? The other misinformation I see is that you wouldn't know that you lost shore power. Well, the fact is right up here, we don't see shore power coming in and we can see the inverter is in inverting mode. So I know right now we don't have shore power coming in. It's very easy to look at this and see this. Now, I know this is a touch display, so you have to touch it for it to turn on. But again, if you go into menu settings and then we go into the actual display itself, we can change the time for the screen to never be off. So if you want to be able to see the screen all the time while you're walking by it, because you don't want to you know, touch it, you can easily just turn it to where it's always on. So that's an easy option to be able to, at a glance, see if you do or don't have shore power coming in. It would be very you know, noticeable right here. The other easy thing for you to be able to do besides turn the screen on all the time, which I don't really recommend, but you can do if you want, is to simply go into your system setup. So let me show you that. That was menu, then settings, and then system setup. And in here, you can see it says monitor for shore disconnect disabled. So monitor for shore disconnect. So if we want to get told that the shore has disconnected power, we can simply turn this on by enabling that. Now we have that turned on. And here in a minute, we'll get a notification. So let's go back out to our normal screen and we'll get a notification here in a minute. Let us know that we don't have shore power coming in. There we go, look at that, popped right up. Grid lost, warning, and you get a flashing screen. So you get it flashing up here and you get a flashing here. You can even set this up to where it will email you. So if you have an alarm, which this is an alarm, it will email you that you have an alarm. So you could not be in the coach, get an email to tell you that you lost grid power, and then you can go in and change your settings on your inverter. This is why I don't think there's any reason to really get the digital multi-control because you can simply enable monitor for shore disconnect. And anytime you don't have shore power, it will give you an alarm telling you that you don't have shore power, which I think that kind of answers all the questions of why people think that they need the digital multi control instead of just the touchscreen. I think that's the most misinformation out there about why the touchscreen doesn't do uh, what the digital multi control is. But I've just shown you in person that that's not true. Everything the digital multi control does, you can do right here in this screen. So hopefully, this stops people thinking that they need the digital multi control if they already have a Servo GX and a Touch 50. If not, if you see someone asking that question, do them a favor and send them this video. That way they're not spending extra money for a part they don't need. I proved right here in this video that is 100% not necessary and actually takes features away from this touch screen as well. Now, I do know that, you know, there's some misinformation out there from installers who weren't aware that you could turn on that screen if it has the inverter. In fact, when Adam and I attended Victron's training, they broke us up into groups and the group that Adam was in had a Marine tech who was ABYC certified, very knowledgeable. He had been doing, you know, Victron equipment for like, I think five or 10 years, he said in boats. And he argued with Adam, telling Adam that you need this digital multi-control. But Adam knew better and actually turned on the setting in here. And the guy was mind blown because he had been telling customers for years they need this extra part. And of course, that customer is buying that part and then also paying them to install it. That guy had been doing Victron stuff for years and just didn't realize that you could turn on that screen in here and control the inverter. The other one is, you know, the, the big the big YouTuber who wanted to see this light. I can totally understand like the problem with if you lose shore power, your battery bank is draining your batteries down. But in my personal opinion, if you're on if you're at an RV park and you have shore power plugged in, you should put your inverter over to charger only. Charger only allows the 110 to pass through, but in the event that you lose shore power, it won't go right into inverting, so you won't be killing your battery bank while you're gone. Now, yes, your rig won't have 110 inside of it, but if you turn on the grid notification feature and the email via VRM, 
then you'll actually get emailed and a notification that you've lost shore power. So you can go back to your coach or you can turn on your inverter and you can say, okay, I know that we have an air conditioner running. And so we need to get back to the RV in this time period because our battery bank is going to die because the air conditioning is running off the battery bank, which I really like that you can actually go in and remotely control it where you wouldn't be able to do that if you also have this because this overrides the servo. That's just the way it is. Anything you do over here is displayed over here, but you cannot override the digital multi-control. This is a much better option in my opinion. Now, if you want more information about controlling this Victron touchscreen here, like what do I recommend as far as connecting and disconnecting from shore power, why I think you should use charger only when you have shore power, for example, and not leave your inverter on. So if you lose shore power, your battery bank isn't running the AC. If you want more information about that, check out my other video. Don't forget to check out the website, joelmine.com, and I'll see you next time.